Hey guys, I'm Dorian Day and welcome to Massive in Depth number 6. Today we're going to be giving an overview of Massive's envelopes and modulation section, and then we're going to be going over the functionality of Massive's envelopes. The envelopes and modulators are selected by clicking these tabs here. You can see that there are four blue envelopes and four green modulator tabs. Um, when you restart the patch, they're all set to LFO by default, but you can switch them to performer or stepper here and the label updates. So with that covered, let's go over envelopes for this video. Now at the top of each envelope tab is, are some menus and some options. The first menu is a factory preset and user presets. Um, next is the save button, which lets you save your own presets, and delete, which lets you delete the user presets. Next we have um, the trigger reset zero toggle. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what the manual has to say about this button. The trigger mode switch causes the envelope to re-trigger from the beginning every time it receives an incoming MIDI note. If this is dis disabled, the envelope will not start at zero if the previous note's release period is not over yet, instead using the current level as its starting point. So I read that, and to be honest, I wasn't really clear to uh, it wasn't really clear to me what it meant. I tried to mess around pressing different notes and toggling the switch and changing the envelope to length, and honestly, I couldn't notice a difference in the sound. Um, if someone actually knows how to make this option obvious, let me know. I searched and couldn't really find anything. Um, next, you have the linear toggle. This changes the decay from exponential to linear. Um, if we click, you can see the decay shape changes. Note that the attack phase is always linear, it's this straight line. Uh, this is another difference between Massive and Serum. In Massive, uh, you only have the option of linear attacks or linear or exponential decays and uh, exponential releases, but you can't change uh, the slope. Um, in Serum, for example, you can completely change the slope of every section so you can make the attack uh, completely logarithmic completely exponential linear same for the decay phase and same for the release phase uh, next we have the one shot control uh, this means the envelope will run through its course when a MIDI note is received regardless of whether it is held so if I, um, I'm just going to hit a note and you're going to have to trust me that's what I'm doing. I'm hitting it and I'm letting it go. Well, one problem there is this is set to infinity, so it was never going to end anyways. So I'm going to put that to three or four and try again. There you go. So you hit it once and it goes through to the end. This is especially good for percussive sounds or modulations impacting only the attack of the sound or when you want one envelope to stay in the decay phase when the rest have entered the release phase. Um, next we have the hold or the uh, hold key or key hold. This holds the selected note until another note is hit. So yeah, it just sustains until I hit a different note. Um, this all, uh, even works on the looping section, as you probably heard. Um, honestly, though, I can't really think of a very good use for this. Only live performance comes to mind, but I'm sure there is one. So if you know of one, let me know. So next we have the middle section. Um, on the far left are two sliders, the key velocity and key tracking sliders. Uh, these scale the maximum amplitude of the envelope by the depth of the slider and then the eventual value so if you use full velocity or use velocity at full depth like we have here and you hit a note with 50 percent velocity then the maximum envelope height is only 50 percent of its total range uh, which is also determined by this knob here key tracking works similarly but for low and high notes so the higher the note on the keyboard the higher the maximum value on the envelope and then here we have the envelope graph where you can click and drag and change values. 
It's not very precise, but it's good for making quick drastic changes if you want to go from full sustain to like a pluck really quickly. So finally we have the last ro uh, row at the bottom. Uh, the first knob is the delay knob, and this delays the onset of the envelope from the reception of a MIDI note. This has a number of uses, uh, none of which I could think of offhand, but I'm sure I'll be using this in future sound designs, and I have, and I've seen other people use it a lot. So I'm going to kind of show you what's going on. I'm going to set the delay. I'm going to hit a note, like right now. Uh, there's no volume. Okay, now. Okay, I'm going to increase it even more. And now. So you can hear the delay on the onset of the envelope. Uh, next we have your traditional ADSR with some different names and added knobs. First is the attack. It determines the amount of time it takes for the sound to evolve to its maximum amplitude. Or uh, actually, that's not entirely accurate because maybe you don't have your envelope on the volume. But it's um, it's the maximum time it takes for the envelope to go from zero to its maximum value. The next control let um, lets you control the maximum value or height of the envelope. Um, next is decay, which controls the amount of time it takes for the envelope to reach its maximum peak uh, to its sustain level. And then level is your traditional sustain knob. Um, so next, then next finally we have, or not finally, but next we have the looping feature, which by default is off. Uh, let's go over the different sections. Uh, first is this looping box, which actually turns the loop on. By default, it's on off. Um, you can turn it up to 32 loops or infinity. So we'll just set it to like four. Next, we have the morphing table or menus. And you can choose two different shapes which you can sh uh, see show up in gray on the envelope um, display. The morph knob here lets us switch between the shapes. The level controls the um, maximum volume, volume of the shape and, or actually not the maximum volume, it controls the end volume and the sustain level because you can see the middle values don't change when you go all the way down. But when, when lo the looping ends, it will sustain at whatever value you have set here. So if it's at zero, it goes to zero. Uh, next is the S loop. It's the speed of the loop. Uh, unfortunately, this is not synced to the grid. Um, and then finally, we have the release knob, which determines the amount of time it takes the envelope level to return to zero after the note is released. And with that, we finish um, Massive In Depth number six.